Hey, welcome to Scoobytopia. If you're a returning resident, welcome back. And if you're new, I'm Nate and I've got a big one for you this time. Throughout the decades, Scooby-Doo has had a long line of family members pop up in the series. And we all remember Scrappy-Doo and Scooby-Dum. But what happened to them? I haven't seen them in a while. And do you remember the ton of other family members not in nearly as many episodes? Some of them only ever appeared once and in episodes that aren't even legally available to watch in any form now. Later, I'll take a very quick look at the first season of Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, so I'll be saving him for last. Instead of the obvious, let's dive into Scooby-Doo's forgotten family, going all the way far back as far as we can chronologically, and really put together what we know of this family. Family tree. We're sticking to television canon, so no Archie Comics characters like Spooky Doo. We start the Doo family lineage by going all the way back to Missing Link Doo in A Pup Named Scooby-Doo Season 4 Episode 1, The Where doo of Doo Manor. The villain of the episode attempts to find the skeleton of the Missing Link to become famous, and it's finally unearthed at the end. Scooby's mom says that he has his nose, and that's about all we get. We only have the skeleton, so we can't know how he sounded, looked, or acted this far back. Just that he was the first of the family to be what we can assume is a talking anthro dog. Nothing much else to know about this ancient lost member of the legacy. In the new Scooby and Scrappy-Doo show Episode 13, Wedding Bell Booze, we're introduced to Yankee Doodle Doo, a later descendant who we find belonged to McBaggy Rogers, Shaggy's own descendant, who arrived together in America on the Mayflower, showing that the Dewey's and Rogers have been together for a long time. McBaggy's sour ghost spends the episode trying to ruin a Rogers family wedding, and just like him, we see Yankee Doodle Doo wasn't such a happy-go-lucky dog himself. Otherwise, the history books don't give us much more about this guy. Next up is Grandpa Scooby. In Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo Season 2, Episode 1C, Scooby's Roots, Scooby, Scrappy, and Shaggy visit Scooby's grandfather, Grandpa Scooby, appropriately startling each other. Scrappy excitedly jumps into his arms and even translates Scooby talk for Grandpa, who admits he could never understand him. He serves the boys some dog biscuits, but Scooby and Shaggy take them all, so he confiscates them back for Scrappy and himself, showing off how agile he still is. Before he can go get some cake, a ghost suddenly appears and starts throwing food everywhere before blasting a horn. Hiding from the ghost, everyone blends into an old painting. They escape, and Grandpa Scooby gets an idea, disguising themselves as chicken. Tired of the attacks, Grandpa decides to finally move out of Scooby Manor as it pops back up and says there's no place in the manor for cowards, which riles up Scrappy. Happy to see a member of the Dew family have so much courage, the ghost picks him up and reveals our other family member, Great Grandpa Scooby, who was, as they describe him, not me, a Civil War hero. Kind of awkward that both Shaggy and Scooby have relatives that are Confederate soldiers, but it makes sense with Yankee Doodle Doo and McBaggy Rogers being together. Obviously, there would be a Confederate Scooby to go with the Rogers of Scooby Doo and the Boo Brothers. Otherwise, that's all we get from these two since this was their only appearance. We're doubling up these next two family members since they share all their appearances, being married and all, and we finally have more than just a one-off character lost to time. Mumsy Doo and Dada Doo, sometimes known as Mama Doo and Daddy Doo, are, of course, Scooby's parents. Since we're trying to stay as chronological as possible, we should first visit the 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo Episode 9, It's a Wonderful Scoob, where we open at the Dooville Veterinary Hospital. Scooby's dad paces all over waiting for the news when he hears it's a boy and runs off to meet Scooby. His mom shows him off and he says his first words, Scooby-Doo, so they decide to call him that. Next, we travel over to a pup named Scooby-Doo Season 2, Episode 1, Curse of the Collar, where both of them are attending the Dew family reunion at the Nittingham Puppy Farm for Scooby's birthday. Both of them show off how much they love their children, and Scooby's presented with his birthday gift, a family collar he inherits. Scooby thinks it's ugly, but his mom forces it on him. A ghost shows up looking for the collar, which spooks both of them like their son hiding with he and Shaggy. Hearing the name of the ghost, a dog catcher gone mad, the two are terrified as the first time they met him is recounted by Mrs. Nittingham. The two were on a date that night when a puppy he was chasing needed help, so they chased him into his own car's cage, only for him to get caught as the thief of expensive collars going missing lately. As Freddy says the collar must be cursed now, the Dews faint. Though Shaggy Shaggy knows mentioning food will get them right back up. Mrs. Nittingham is abducted for the collar, though it falls from her hands and back onto Scooby, so everyone goes searching for her. Getting nowhere, Velma calculates it's time for a Dew family sniff, and they chase after their noses where they find a clue. And despite running inside to hide, the ghost gets inside and captures both parents. The gang eventually catch the ghost and unlock where everyone was being hidden, though they're covered in paint and mistaken for ghosts themselves. Shaggy tells a lame joke, and just like their son, neither parent gets it. Later, they get to have a big party with all of Scooby's siblings, and as Scooby still hates the collar, his mom reveals his dad hated it too, and as an extra birthday gift, lets him take it off. We next jump back to the Were-Doo of Dew Manor, as Scooby and Shaggy mistake their entrance for a monster. His mom spells out that they're being chased by a were -do, and when Shaggy says it out loud, they have a do family faint. Shaggy calls the game, and Velma revives them with some pizza. They explain they don't know why the were -do is chasing them, so Freddy assures them they'll catch it. Scooby's mom introduces Professor Digny, who's helping research the family lineage. Really helpful for this in particular. He explains that he believes the relative nasty do, we'll circle back to that later, was once turned into a were -do, causing them to faint. They revive for worse news as he explains the curse has passed on to the first son of every seventh generation once setting foot in the manor under a full moon, which of course is Scooby, as they comfort him over the news. The gang is determined to solve what's really going on, however, so his mom kisses him as she thanks him, and his dad tells him how proud he's made them. They later continue to remind him as he gets scared to keep him on track. For the episode Music Chase, they even assist in playing along with the band. After, they think Scooby has turned into a were -do, but Velma thankfully finds it to just be a mask. Following the capture of the were -do, they tell Scooby how proud they are again, and they admire the missing link you exposed from before, though Freddy scares them into one last faint for the road. Out of the puppy years, we return to winning Bell Boos for their next appearance. With Scooby back for the wedding, his parents have their own little mini parade to welcome him home as he runs up to them. They tackle him and give him tons of kisses 
dance, and even perform their own ballet routine for some reason. Unfortunately, talk of a ghost spooks them off, and spooked again by a prank by Shaggy's uncle, Gaggy Rogers, jump into a tree in fear. Later, mistaking Scooby for a ghost, they return in fear with someone we'll be getting to later. Running from the real ghost of McBaggy Rogers, Scooby and Shaggy land in Dada Doo's bath, who joins their running in fear, with Mumsy joining as they go by. Dada later excuses his son from the table as Scrappy carries him off. Mumsy and Dada get scared again as the ghost makes another appearance outside, hiding themselves in the fruit punch, which spooks off Scooby as they laugh. They later notice the ghost, pulling another Doo family faint. They run with everyone into the basement and, holy shit, partake in a culturally insensitive moment. How about that? Oof. Anyway, they figure out what treasure the ghost is looking for and celebrate. Terrified of going into the cave to look for the treasure, they side with Scooby and Shaggy's team. They're talked into joining over some food, however, and after Scooby catches the ghost, they hear the explanation and watch the treasure be opened. As Scooby leaves, they tearfully wave goodbye, reminding him they love him and to write. Next, we travel over to the new Scooby-Doo Mysteries, Episode 9, A Night Louse at the White House. Hearing Scooby cry for his mumsy on TV after being framed by a ghost, both his parents spring into action, packing their bags. On the plane, they read in the paper that there might be rain, making Mumsy happy she brought Scooby's galoshes. Still on the plane later, she hears the ghost is giving everyone cold feet, so she's even happier she brought them. Finally catching up, Mumsy offers the galoshes down to Scooby, resulting in catching the ghosts. Later, they dance around the President of the United States, who thanks them for their son's efforts. A really absurdly American propaganda episode. Next, we return to It's a Wonderful Scoop, where a traumatized Scooby quits and goes back home. They fling open the door, spooking Scooby, who's now terrified of every noise, including the phone as Mumsy tells Shaggy he's unavailable. Scooby's unable to come to the phone. <laughs> no more ghosts and monsters! <laughs> Lastly, we continue with The 13 Ghosts of Scooby-Doo, Episode 12, The Ghouliest Show on Earth. Mumsy and Dada excitedly wait for their world-famous ghost-chasing son to make a trip home to Dooville to see them, though Dada almost keeps his snacks before he arrives. Instead of Scooby, however, a circus shows up, offering them to come and see it for free, so they accept the offer. Showing down the food, they finally see Scooby show up and run to meet him. They do their exact ballet routine from before, one might even say the same animation with that suspicious costume and hair design change between shots. Anyway, Mumsy and Dada explained they couldn't turn down the free fun. After a fright, Shaggy runs them up along with Daphne to escape, and they carry them all the way back home. Mumsy and Dada are broken up over having to leave, and Scooby joins them in their family tears. Later, they're overjoyed to get Daphne at the circus again as their house somehow makes its way there, finding the way to the big top for the big show. After Scooby and the gang save the day, Mumsy and Dada finally celebrate his homecoming properly, and chronologically, that marks the final time we see them. So, who's next? For this relative, we travel back to the Weirdoo of Doo Manor, where we meet Scooby's uncle, Horton Doo. Running from the Weirdoo, they open a coffin and find Horton, mistaking him for it. As they come back to greet him, we find out that, unlike Scooby, he loves scary things, showing off all the bats and skeletons in his pocket. Somehow, we see he even has a monster of his own in them, and it clearly loves to play rough. Unfortunately, that's the last we see of him. Sticking again to the Weirdoo of Doo Manor, as we remember, Professor Digny explains he believes Nasty Doo upset a sorcerer who turned him into a Weirdoo. This turns out to not be true, however, and the Nasty Doo in the episode is just a villain pretending to be him to get the missing link. So we actually have never met the real him. We do know the costume is made to look just like him though, so we can get an idea. Otherwise, let's move on. Next, we arrive firmly in the Scooby-Doo Show, where we meet Scooby's first cousin and probably second best known relative, scooby Dom. Though he sadly only appears on four of the episodes, he does appear in the opening credits theme of every episode of the show. We aren't going to discuss his third appearance, Season 2, Episode 2, Vampire Bats and Scaredy Cats, since I've already discussed that episode at length in the very first episode of this series. Go check out that episode if you haven't. Dom's personality and voice, his laugh especially, are pretty clearly at least partially based off the character of Mortimer Snurd, one of the main ventriloquist dummies used by Edgar Bergen from 1938 into the 70s. You might know him from their appearance in the 1947 Disney film Fun and Fancy Free from the Mickey and the Beanstalk segment, if nothing else. Don't slam the roof, you might wake Mr. Bergen. <laughs> Let's start my boy Scooby Dumb off with his debut, Season 1, Episode 30, The Gruesome Game of the Gator Ghoul, a fairly iconic episode. Scooby and the gang travel to Georgia to visit Dumb, and he's especially excited because it's the first time they've seen each other since they were puppies. Once there, Dumb pops out to greet Scooby. <laughs> Inside, they hear the gruesome Gator Ghoul has been ruining the business of Dumb's owners, Ma and Pa Skillet, unable to ship any of their product and abandoned by most of their workers. Caring about the furs especially, the Scoobies lick their lips. Hearing the word clue triggers Dumb to do his signature phrase. Clues? Dum, 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 dum. Ma and Pa reveal Dumb's wish is to be a police dog someday, though he's not very good at the job yet, as we see. He joins the gang in their search, and when Scooby runs terrified at the mention of the ghoul, Dumb instead immediately jumps into action. Being the clear detective of the family, he finds the first clue, a footprint, not realizing it's right under the ghoul's actual foot. Dumb runs off with the others, but triggers one of the machines to explode all over. Luckily, it scares off the ghoul, and everyone celebrates Dumb. That's my Scooby-Doo-Dumb! Oh, it was nothing. 
After the gator shows up again, Dum runs off, falls down a hole, and ends up on springs, where he knocks a gator costume onto himself and falls to the ground. Believing he caught the ghoul, he slings the costume around as everyone celebrates. Upon further inspection, the mechanical costume belongs to a film company that produced a movie here a year ago. Later on their own, Dum helps Scooby and Shaggy with their latest food concoction. <laughs> By the time the others find them, Dumb and his cousin are out cold from a food coma. With Fred's new plan to cover them in flour, Dumb assists in the final act, luring the gator over as a ghost with Shaggy and Scooby, which works too well as they get chased all over. After they catch the ghoul, the three later make some final sacks before their goodbye, and the two hug once more. <laughs> In Season 1, Episode 5, The Headless Horseman of Halloween, Dumb returns, but like in Vampire Bats, he's mistakenly referred to as Scooby's brother by Shaggy as we start. Definitively, he's his cousin, so we just have to make do. In this also very classic, iconic episode, Dumb has joined the gang for a Halloween party in the little town of Sleepy Hollow, taking the backside of Scooby's costume. Outside, they hear a real horse, but Scooby confirms both he and Dumb didn't make the noise, and in ranks the Headless Horseman himself. The Headless Horseman! The Headless Horseman? Who? The Headless Horseman! Ooh, that headless horseman. Dumb runs off and Scooby is flung around, out of his costume and into the pool. The boys come in to explain they saw the same headless horseman that Ichabod Crane's granddaughter Beth was just describing. Fun fact, Beth shares the same voice of Janet Waldo from Vampire Bats, among other classic appearances of the show she's made, of course. Dumb is sympathetic toward the poor soldier who lost his head in the legend, and he and Scooby especially don't like that Ichabod was never seen again after being chased. The horseman makes a sudden appearance, and Scooby jumps into Dumb's arms, and they join Shaggy and Velma in searching for clues. Dumb believes he's found him, though it's just a bowling ball and coat. Summing the door causes the ball to roll around and fake them out. Yep. It's a bowling ball, all right. Shaggy corrects himself by referring to Dumb correctly as Scooby's cousin when he mistakes him for his reflection, so at least he remembered. They think they see the horseman again and freak out, but thankfully it's just Dumb, and they do the special handshake hug again. The horseman really does show up, which Dumb respectfully takes his hat off for, but he and Scooby retract and remove their heads when he asks for theirs. The trio run to tell the others they caught the horseman on the sewing machine, and though he's gone when they return, they find a clue. Clue? Dum 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 dum. Sorry, Scooby. <laughs> After another attack, this time on Beth Saint's necklace, Thelma searches around for clues. Come in. That was only me, Scooby Dog. Ooh. Dum 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 dum. Open sesame. No, Tarloff, I don't think so. Dumb continues to trigger the butler, who Velma immediately suspects. With another family member attacked, Fred says it's time to find more clues. No clues? Uh -uh. Then what's that stuck to the end of your nose? Nose? What's a nose? Dumb ends up finding something helpful, and Scooby assists in another great clue. Hearing they have to go see the horseman's grave, the dummies faint, and Dub decides to join for a do family faint moment. On the way, the cousins are relieved they only run into the butler and not the horseman himself. When they find nothing, Fred says that is a clue to the confusion of the cousins. They ride back, ready for the final act. <laughs> <laughs> After Scooby ends up on a plane with the horseman, Dumb grabs a net to hopefully catch him. After a long chase as the horseman tries to lose them, Dumb successfully catches all three. After going over all the clues that led them to the culprit, they trigger the family detective again. He's still looking for clues. Oh! After returning from the water, he reveals a clue, but it's just a fish that spits in his face as the episode ends. For the final appearance of Dumb, we travel to Season 2, Episode 4, a Chiller Diller movie thriller. However, this episode is also the only appearance of our next cousin, so let's go ahead and introduce her so we can cover both their appearances and not repeat anything. Allow me to introduce Scooby D, Scooby and Dumb's glamorous movie star cousin. Fun fact again, Scooby D is voiced by Janet Waldo returning yet again. That means she actually stars in three of the four episodes that Dumb appears in. The episode opens as we see a white dog knitting before being spooked by a phantom, and Dumb not realizing his cousin Dee is just acting in a scene for her picture, rushes in to save her, followed by Scooby trying to stop him and creating chaos. Dee gives Dumb a kiss as thanks despite his error, and a jealous Scooby gets one as well. Dee excuses herself to go take off her makeup, and when she gets to her mirror, she finds a warning to quit the picture from Milo Booth, the long dead actor made famous as the Phantom in the original picture she's currently remaking. Scooby and Dumb offer Dee 24 hour protection, and she dodges their kisses so we get a full Scooby and Dumb makeout scene. I guess it wasn't weird enough that both cousins want her as it is, let's just have all the kissing cousins. People from the studio, like her dramatic coach, join them in the trip where she has her own private train car, though they notice a coffin being lowered as well. Dee assures her cousins that it's probably just a prop for the picture. Dee joins the girls while the trio of boys make some food per usual. Thanks. <laughs> Oh boy, 
that's what I get for watching the wrong Scooby! Unfortunately, the Phantom finds them, so Shaggy grabs a suddenly yellow colored dumb, and they rush out. Scooby acts out what they saw to the others as more back them up, so they tell Dee to go back to her safer private car. They go to inspect the coffin, and a hand reaches out to Dumb, freaking him out as we find it's the conductor of the train. Hearing the Phantom rose up and stuffed him in there, Velma says they need to find clues, triggering Dumb's instincts, though he and Scooby only end up freeing someone's pet cat, and they land in the coffin. Velma finds mud in the coffin, while Fred and Daphne assure Dee of her safety. Unfortunately, the Phantom springs in, but Shaggy springs in on him and throws him into Fred's arms. He turns off the lights, and when they come back, we find Dee in Daphne's arms as Dee and Dumb try tearing poor Shaggy apart, believing they caught the Phantom. With some persuasion from Dee, Scooby is convinced to dress up as her as bait for the Phantom, with him getting a full professional drag makeover. Watch out, RuPaul! Dee asks her guard Shaggy for some water, but goes to get it herself, seeing he's passed out. Dee and Dumb search everywhere for her, but can't find anything, and as Dee walks back, the Phantom appears, muscles her, and replaces her with a lookalike. As a fully sentient talking being, this seems especially cruel. The fake goes with Fred and the others, while the Phantom detaches their car, leaving them in the small town named after him as he runs off with Dee. Everyone sets off to find the mausoleum holding his body, and Dumb is triggered into detective mode, though he just finds an aggressive insect. In his crypt they find the same mud from the coffin, and inside, the body is missing. Shaggy Doo, Dumb, and Fake D search around, but when they need a D kiss to motivate Scooby, the fake is disgusted and gives him a more painful substitute instead, creating suspicion. No, let me try. She sure don't kiss like Scooby D. That's cause she's not Scooby D. The fake makes her escape as they run back to tell the others, and worse, the Phantom locks them in. They see a hole in the roof and try that escape route. We need one more person. Duh, here I come. Uh oh. Hey, like Scooby Dumb opened the door. I do. Yeah, I did. How about that? <laughs> Leaving the cemetery, they see a Milo Booth film museum advertised with the fair, and checking it out, find an old newsreel where they see Milo Booth wore glasses unlike the Phantom. With more than muddy footprints along with the fake D's, they realize he must have been after the film, and they find the fake waiting outside, chasing after her into the funhouse where they find the Phantom. And there's Scooby D! Yeah, howdy doody! The gang chase after them with Shaggy and the cousins finally hanging upside down to catch Dee as they float by on the log ride, and successfully rescue her, though they fall. The three cousins and Shaggy run off as bait to finally catch the Phantom, and they finally lock him in the Ferris wheel car. My hero! Ooh. You too, cousin dumb! Unmasked, the Phantom was a cop who wanted to get rich with the fake D that would only listen to him, using the Phantom as an explanation for why she would stop listening to her dramatic coach. However, the mud didn't come from the area, and the mausoleum key was too new, so his plan wasn't tight enough to fool the gang or cousins. And Scooby demonstrates the coffin switch he made to make it look empty by putting on Dumb's hat. With Doo and Dumb dressed up nice for her big night, they see her get to accept her award for the picture. I wouldn't be here at all tonight if it weren't for my hero cousins. Scooby Dooby Dumb. <laughs> And so Dee's first and only appearance ends along with Dumb's fourth and final. Dumb is honestly my favorite member of the Dew clan, and I don't know why he hasn't ever made a big comeback. I really want to see him return again someday, both he and Dee even. The Dumb episodes have always been some of my favorites. With the better known cousins out of the way, let's dig deeper. For this very long lost cousin, we go to the new Scooby Doo Mysteries Season 1 Episode 10A, Showboat Scooby. Here we meet Dixie Doo, a performer and singer on the Delta Queen Showboat. Well, as she performs tonight, however, a ghost interrupts the show and scares everyone off the boat. Daphne and Scrappy find her safe outside as she explains the situation. The mayor suddenly shows up asking for the mortgage for the showboat, or else he's going to repossess it. As Dixie and the owner explain they don't have it because of the ghost, he says it's not his problem. A bit later, Dixie offers her fried chicken to Scooby and Shaggy, but only teasing them, not letting them feast until after they catch the ghost. Scooby and the others run away from the ghost, who chases, and Dixie comes out of hiding from behind the curtains. As the ghost gets what he wants and runs off, he's confronted by the ghost of his fiance, who grabs it and runs off. Scooby chases both ghosts, but just causes chaos. Scrappy saves them, and the fiance Beyonce goes and masks herself as Dixie Doo. She returns the necklace, revealing she did this to catch him, using his own paint and tricks against him, along with her own tricks. With the ghost caught, Scooby and Shaggy finally get their fried chicken feast from Dixie, though as they look out, they see the real ghosts. Dixie loves the sight, though her cousin much prefers his chicken. And that's the last we see of Dixie Doo. Staying on the same episode for this next long lost cousin, a very obvious Elvis type, we go to the new Scooby Doo Mystery Season 1 Episode 10B, The Dooby Dooby Doo Adoo. The gang visit Las Vegas to see Scooby's cousin, Dooby Dooby Doo, perform, and they look over to the noise and see Dooby signing autographs. Hey, good to see you, man. How are you, cats? We're 
not cats, we're dogs. A reporter tries to get an interview, but Doobie has a show to get to. She really insists, especially his collar, but he insists on getting to the show. Scooby compliments the collar, and Doobie explains a fan gave it to him for good luck, though he's felt like someone's been out to get him since he received it. Doobie's about to get attacked as Scooby saves him, but nobody else saw the hand. Doobie makes it out safely and performs his song. Folks everywhere the whole world through, I wanna be hip like the Doobie Doobie Doo. What's my secret? Here's a clue. Just sing along with Dooby Dooby Doo. He plays around with his audience, giving a woman a kiss, but one of the showgirls starts pulling him off the stage. Scrappy takes Scooby and jumps down to save his uncle, but the woman is gone when they try to find her. The reporter then hurries off without getting anything from Dooby like she wanted, catching Daphne's suspicion. They ask Scooby to dress up as Dooby as a decoy, with Scrappy making an exact copy of the collar that has a homing signal. Scooby is really feeling himself until he realizes what he just said yes to doing. Backstage, Scrappy and Shaggy play one of Dooby's records to help Scooby fake the show, but unfortunately the record starts skipping and he's exposed, and he has to scare everyone off with his own singing bringing down the house literally. Scooby's pulled off and abducted with the collar, so Doobie and the others chase after his cousin. He calls for a special limo and they use the homing device to follow. The woman who took Scooby explains after discovering the fake that she only gave him the collar to transport it and wants it back. As the gang watch, the reporter sneaks up, revealing she's actually a government agent tracking a stolen laser band disguised as a collar and explains the whole situation. Scrappy tries to use the laser, but the bad guys get it and they split up. The agent leaves to get police while the gang and Doobie try to disguise themselves, failing. As a last-ditch effort, Daphne remembers how effective Scooby's singing is at destruction like before, and has him use his vocal magic which affects the laser and knocks the bad guys out. Scooby baby, you're beautiful! Mwah. Yeah. At his next show, Doobie brings Scooby and Scrappy out on stage with him, and they all dance as he sings a song dedicated to them as thanks, and Scooby brings down the house one last time with his final note. Thus ends the only performance of Doobie, a disappointment for all his dance for sure. That's me. I'm his dance. I love him now. Bring him back. For the last of Scooby's cousins, we travel back to Wedding Bell Booze again. Whoopsie Doo is owned by Shaggy's jokester uncle, Gaggy Rogers, with Whoopsie being a clown in turn. He excitedly jumps out to greet Scooby, trips, and falls into his arms, which appears to be par for the course. Mistaking Scooby for a ghost, he runs in fear with Scooby's parents. Later seeing the ghost, he runs off with his aunt and the others. After everything settles, he and Gaggy bring the gang with another fake ghost as the two chuckle to themselves. Listening to McBaggy's diary Daphne found, they still continue their jokes and chuckles. Realizing there's a brain twister, Gaggy says maybe Whoopsie might know it since his brain's twisted. <laughs> <laughs> I will get it. He's definitely a do. The pilgrims didn't have plastic. Someone must have been here recently. Yeah, but him? Who's him, Scoob? The ghost. Oh. Unfortunately, the ghost appears and chases them all out, right into the wedding area. Gaggy and Whoopsie continue to laugh at their own jokes while everyone tries to solve the mystery. As the ghost reappears, he joins the Dew family faint from before. He runs with everyone into the basement and joins the, well, uh, we saw it already, let's not dwell on this, uh, next, next, for my sake. He sides with Scooby and the others in their cowardice, but is coerced into joining and watches Scooby tunnel for the treasure, taking it from him. Unfortunately, it's so heavy that he falls backwards and tosses it right into the hands of McBaggy. After capturing the ghost, he watches everything unfold. With Scooby, he takes a look inside the treasure the ghost was after. Horn? What kind of corny treasure is that? You <laughs> get it? <laughs> As Scooby leaves, he waves goodbye with his aunt and uncle, marking the final time we ever see Whoopsie. Finally getting into the family members that are definitely siblings, we get Skippy Doo. Scooby's brother, he unfortunately has only ever made one appearance, so let's head back to Curse of the Collar. Skippy shows off his new computer to Velma, excited for how efficient it runs. My new computer should prove to be highly efficient. Cheeky, Skippy. That's what I was going to say. Clearly being the smart sibling, we otherwise don't really get anything else for him, so let's move on. We stay in Curse of the Collar for this again as we meet Howdy Doo, another brother of Scooby's. The only thing we really get to know about him is he loves the National Exaggerator, Fred's favorite magazine. It's my favorite newspaper, Howdy! <laughs> Imagine that, mine too. From that, we can gather Skippy might have taken some of his marks, but otherwise we sadly never saw him again either. After barely anything on those brothers, we finally get to one with some more meat. Let's introduce Yabadoo. Yabba makes his first appearance in Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo Season 4, Episode 1C. Yabba's Russell Hustle in the town of Tumbleweed as his nephew Scrappy is visiting. Yabba, all white unlike his brother, is a full-blown cow dog showing off his moves to Scrappy. His owner, Deputy Dusty, makes his favorite chili snacks his own equivalent to Scooby snacks, and he loses control. <laughs> With the intense heat, Yabba writes a bag of flour all over like a bull. Scrappy enters the phone, hearing the report of some cattle rustling, so he, Yabba, and Dusty rush off to see. Yabba decides they should use the old disguise bit to go undercover, with Dusty and Yabba as a cow, and Scrappy as a cactus. Unfortunately, a bull sets his sights on their disguise, trying to romance it, and backing into a cactus, land in his arms. Before they can act, a helicopter grabs them and takes off as Scrappy pathetically chases. They decide the cow isn't good enough, though, and drop them in the mud as an angry Scrappy runs off with his famous catchphrase. Puppy! 
but he's no match for these guys, and Yaba's muddy feet make him equally useless. The pathetic Deputy Dusty tries to back away, but the wrestler isn't willing to let him go. Yaba tries to lasso him, but just captures himself, Scrappy, and Dusty in the process. Locked in the shed, Yaba tries the old disguise bit again, catching the attention of the bull, and stuffing a chili snack in the bull's mouth, he kicks the shed, freeing the trio, and capturing the wrestlers. Dusty tries to take credit of the disguising idea, putting the mask back on, only for the bull to chase him all over the west. Obviously, unlike his brother, Yaba is much braver and ready to take action, although he clearly has the same bumbling traits that often run in the family. He wasn't mentioned in Curse of the Collar like the other siblings, which has led to much speculation about his age, whether he's older and wasn't included because he was already working with Dusty, or younger and just wasn't born yet, or maybe the staff of Pub just wanted to forget him. By the final season of this series, Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo, the episodes were broken up into three segments, and for this season, every final segment was dedicated to Scrappy and Yappadoo shorts aired on their own initially, with no Scooby involvement, just these two and Dusty on adventures in the Wild West, for a total of 13 team short appearances overall. The experiment to drop Scooby in favor of a new format with his nephew and brother was ultimately a failure, and we haven't heard of Yabba in films or TV since, so he would appear in the Archie comics run. Going chronologically, we return to Curse of the Collar yet again for Scooby's final sibling, Ruby Dew. We see her in the sibling's photo, and she shows up for the party at the end, showing off her cool style with Daphne. Ruby, your outfit is totally awesome! I know! Next, we go to Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo Season 2, Episode 7C, Scrappy's Birthday. Shaggy recounts the day Ruby's son was born as she's taken back to the delivery room and he and Scooby pace around. Now, don't you worry, Scooby and Shaggy. I'll be just fine. The two are woken up and given the news that it's a boy. Hey! You can't swap me like that and get away with it! Better than that! The two rush to see what happened as the doctors call him Scrappy, which Ruby believes is a fitting name. He immediately escapes and causes chaos, and while Scooby and Shaggy get in trouble searching for him, he makes his way back to Ruby, lamenting his inability to find a playmate. When the two dummies rush by, she explains who they are, and he excitedly rushes off to join the fun. Later, he asks Ruby if he can travel with his uncle and Shaggy, and she says, we'll see. Though the two of them are still recovering from their many wounds they took from their first encounter. And as for proper appearances, that's the end for Ruby Dew. And with her out of the way, we finally unveil the final member of the Dew family, and perhaps the most well-known, as previously mentioned, Scrappy. Scrappy Doo. The channel Inside a Mind already made a fantastic video, The Rise and Fall of Scrappy Doo, along with the video Scrappy Doo and Our Capacity to Hate from the channel Second Chance, so I won't bother with explaining who he is or his potty history, really. Go watch those videos for some real good Scrappy deep diving. Obviously, more than any other relative, we all know who Scrappy is. He's Scooby's nephew, the son of Ruby Doo, who is sent to spend time with his uncle. Sometimes, like in this book, Scooby Doo the Haunted Carnival, he's his cousin. That's definitely wrong, though. With him, our Doo family tree is finally complete. Look at that. And honestly, I think it's time for his redemption. The most recent proper appearance he got was in Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, where he was treated as poorly as he often is these days. And despite the opportunity to put him in the film Scooby-Doo and the 13th Ghost, he still only got a quick reference. Even if I did try to go over as many appearances, we'd be here for a 10-hour video and I doubt anyone would want that. So instead, let's look at the first ever appearance he made, the first season of Scooby-Doo and Scrappy-Doo. In early 2020, I bought the complete first season on DVD, still the only season to be released in full, ready to watch it for the first time, as far as I knew. And then my dog ate the discs before I could, but after I bought it again, I realized I'd actually seen every episode before, probably on boomerang growing up and remembered them all. And I have to say, these episodes are on par with, say, the Scooby-Doo show, at least. I really enjoy this season. It truly plays out like 16 more episodes of classic Scooby. Scrappy just happens to be there, and I had a really fun time with it. Just look at everyone's faces here. This is so funny. Although, I hate Scrappy's original voice he has for only this season. I'm not moving. I'm not moving. It honestly almost turned me from pro-Scrappy to anti-Scrappy. Lenny Weinrib, I think is his name. Uh... Hey, we could see the whole alley from up here! Scooby's voice actor Don Messick took over the role in everything up to his retirement after this, and makes the character much more endearing than here. Da -da 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 -da. Birthday power! Just look at the little monster trying to murder his uncle. Here, I'll give you a push! <laughs> oh no! Like Scooby can't skate! Oh come on! My Uncle Scooby could do anything! <laughs> Except skate! At least things are still pretty status quo. You mean we came all the way to Japan just to chase ghosts again? Let me put it this way, Shaggy. Yes. This one I really don't have anything to say for. It's just very funny. Here we go, Scoob! Sashimi! Hmm. Like that must be Japanese for hot dogs! And here's the most relatable scene. Yeah! 
it for you. And because someone has to say it, I'll take one for the team. The Minotaur in Lock the Door to Minotaur is kinda thick. T-H-I-C-C -C, thick. Like, he wins this round, I can't lie. Near the end of the season, Vilma's then-current voice actor Pat Stevens had to quit due to health reasons, and respectfully, I question every acting choice her replacement Marla Frumpkin made. Like, listen to this line read, it's beyond dreadful. Jinkies! It must be the ancient labyrinth of the Minotaur! This is just the break we've been looking for! I can't believe this was approved, aired on television, and I now own it on DVD. Jinkies! That's the missing clue! It is! And Shaggy and the dogs are in terrible danger! Terrible danger! It's like actually dumbfounding that this is real, as respectfully as I can say that. Anyway, maybe we should cancel Scrappy, but just season one Scrappy. Here he is being racist if we need a reason. Bye Scrappy! Bam! No, but I really love Scrappy outside of this season. Justice for Scrappy, make it a hashtag. This season is great, and you should watch it in your rotation of classic Scooby episodes for sure. Except episode 16, The Ransom of Scooby Chief. The episode serves as an unconfirmed backdoor pilot ahead of the show being fully revamped the next season, throwing out the rest of the gang for just Scooby, Scrappy, and Shaggy going on adventures without the supernatural. It's honestly a terrible episode. It really even drops Shaggy and Scooby mostly for new annoying characters never used again. But the other 15 episodes are great. This is also the final season to ever use a laugh track for the show. And now that we exit that excellent little diversion, we finally completed the Dew family tree as far as current main canon goes in film and TV. Hopefully you enjoyed this little dive into the lore of the many generations of Dew, through the many inconsistencies and oddities of continuity to the lesser known members and forgotten episodes. Do you have a favorite of these like me and Scooby Dumb? And or do you have a new favorite you might have not been familiar with? I know I'll be rocking with Dewey Dewey Dew after working on this video. I don't know why they've all gone missing for so long without a proper return. Except for Scrappy, I know why Scrappy's gone. It's time to bring them back though. I'd love to discuss these many canines, so let's do it in the comments! Next time we'll be looking at another direct-to-video movie I love with one of the most memorable twists. Subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. Like this video, it's very important. Go watch the previous video because YouTube is suppressing it from being found normally. Follow me on Twitter, TikTok, Tumblr, etc. at Legend of Justice. I'm more active there. That's the end of the video. Bye!